All right, engineers, so what we're going to do in this video is we're going to talk about the pancreas. We're going to take a little bit of overview into this, all right? So we went and talked about the pancreas with insulin and glucagon in super, super great detail. Now what I want to do is just kind of get an overall look at what we did in that video. Okay, so looking here, where is the pancreas again? It's located retroperitoneal behind the stomach, right? What do we say was important about the pancreas gland, which was made it like very, very interesting? It was a heterocrine gland, right? Heterocrine meaning that it consists of both exocrine and endocrine portion, right? So it was made up of exocrine and endocrine tissue, right? The exocrine was the acini, right? So it was the acini, and then the endocrine was the islets of Langerhans, right? Okay. So what we're doing in here is we're zooming in on the islets of Langerhans, which only makes about 1%. The acini makes about 99% of it, right? So zooming in on this islet of Langerhans, there's two really, really important cells that we talked about. What's this cell right here? This cell right here is specifically going to be the um, beta cell. This one is specifically going to be the pancreatic beta cell. And what did we say was the actual hormone that the pancreatic beta cell secretes? It secretes insulin, right? So it secretes a hormone, and that hormone that it secretes out into the bloodstream is called insulin, which has various metabolic effects on the body, right? But what, we, what did we say was the stimulus for this beta cell to produce insulin? We talked about it was a humoral stimuli, right? It was glucose. Well, what about glucose? It was at high glucose levels, right? So high glucose levels was the stimulus of this beta cell because it worked through those GLUT2 transporters, right, to stimulate this pancreatic beta cell to produce insulin, right? So what is this called whenever you have high glucose levels? It's called hyperglycemia. Okay. And then what did insulin do? It worked on various different target organs. To get a brief overview, what were those target organs? One was the liver. What did it do to the liver? You remember in the liver it helped to be able to promote what's called <coughs> glyco genesis, right? What else did it help to do? It helped to be able to promote different types of protein synthesis. So it also helped a little bit. So we'll put here minor effect. So we'll put here a minor effect on protein synthesis. <coughs> what else did it do? It worked on the adipose tissue, right? So again, what was one of the target organs? One was the liver, where it helped to be able to promote glycogenesis, converting glucose into glycogen and protein synthesis and a little bit of a minor effect, right? And it can also increase amino acid uptake. And again, a minor effect on that one, right? Okay, what about this? This is our adipose, so it works on the adipose tissue too. What does it do to the adipose tissue? Well, it works on the adipose tissue how? It helps to be able to, remember it inhibited the hormone sensitive lipase, but the overall result was help to be able to convert glucose as the carbon skeleton for what? Fatty acids and glycerol to make triglycerides. So it stimulated lipogenesis, okay? It also acted on the muscle. So what does it do in the muscle? What helped to be able to do a lot of things in the muscles, right? One of the things that it did in the muscles was what? It helped to be able to promote, what, an increase glucose uptake via the GLUT4, right? Who else had GLUT4? And I forgot to mention that one. This guy right here for the adipose tissue, right? So he also increases glucose uptake via GLUT4, right? And this one, same thing. The glucose transport or glucose uptake into the muscle cells is through GLUT4 transporters, right? Okay, what else does it do inside of this muscle cell? It also promotes an increase in amino acid uptake, right? And then it also promotes protein synthesis. All right, so what do we have here? It promotes glycogenesis, Protein synthesis, increased amino acid uptake in the liver. It promotes lipogenesis and increased glucose uptake within the adipose. It increases glucose uptake via the GLUT4 in the muscle and increases the amino acid uptake and the protein synthesis. One more thing it also does in the liver. I'm sorry, in the muscle. It also increases what's called glyco 
Genesis, okay, to a minor effect, right, to a minor effect, because not as much glycogen is stored in the muscles as compared to the liver. So that's the functions of insulin in a nutshell. Okay, what were the functions here of the actual, this cell here? This cell right here is called the pancreatic alpha cell, right? So it's called the pancreatic alpha cell. So we can actually put here an A, but we can denote this cell as a alpha cell. And then this cell is a beta cell. What is this cell secreting? It's secreting glucagon, right? And glucagon is responding to what? Low glucose levels. I had a professor once say, you can remember this because the glucose is gone, right? So glucagon is, is secreted when glucose is gone, when it's low, all right? So low glucose levels, what do you call that? You call that hypoglycemia. Okay, there's one other stimulus here, because remember, this can actually work through humoral stimuli to stimulate the release of glucagon. But if you remember, there was also the sympathetic nervous system via norepinephrine and epinephrine, right? Which were acting there to stimulate this process. Okay, what is glucagon doing? Glucagon is acting on the liver and the adipose. So it's acting here in the liver and it's acting here in the adipose. What is it doing here? Well, in the liver, it loves to take glycerol, it loves to take amino acids and other different types of things and convert them into glucose. That process is called gluco neogenesis. That's one big thing. What's the other thing it loves to do? It loves to break down the glycogen into glucose. And what's that going to do? That's going to cause glycogenolysis. What's the overall result of these two things? To increase the blood glucose levels. Okay, what else is it doing? It's acting in the adipose tissue and it's causing lipolysis. What does that mean? It's breaking down triglycerides into fatty acids and glycerol, and some of those are needed to make glucose via gluconeogenesis. So I said that increases blood glucose levels. What does glycogenesis do to the glucose levels? It decreases the glucose levels in the blood. What does increased glucose uptake do to the glucose levels? It decreases the glucose levels in the blood. Why is it decreasing it? Because you're taking more glucose from the blood into the cells. That's what glucose uptake means. So it's increasing, sorry, it's decreasing the blood glucose levels because you're taking more glucose from the blood and putting it into the cells. What does increased glu glucose uptake do here? It also decreases glucose levels in the blood. And what does glycogenesis do? It decreases blood glucose levels in the blood. So insulin's overall effect is to decrease blood glucose levels and glucagon's effect is to increase blood glucose levels. So these two hormones are working as antagonistically to each other, right? Whereas we can say things like norepinephrine and epinephrine are acting like a um, synergist to glucagon. Because you know epinephrine, norepinephrine, what do they do? Gluconeogenesis, glycogenolysis, and lipolysis. So glucagon and epinephrine and norepinephrine are synergism, right? That's a synergism. Whereas glucagon and insulin are utilizing antagonism. All right, guys, I hope this made sense. We covered the pancreas and just a quick overview of its functions, what it's doing. I hope this made sense, Ninja Nerds. All right, until next time.